Hi, um, I'm Alan Hudbin, um, bin manager for Murphy Surveys Ireland. Um, just quickly, I suppose there's a lot of construction projects, a lot from the same kind of an angle today, so I'm going to take this one a little differently. Um, ours is from the surveying aspect, how we provide information to projects such as actually just the previous one, um, Bagot Street. Um, it was nice actually to see that one, it's been a while since we were on that one. Um, but the types of stuff that we do um, for these projects, um, our approach is different. It's We've tighter timescales, we need to provide data um, for these projects quite quickly. Um, and I'm just going to give you a quick run through on a heritage building project um, that we worked on. Um, and a quick introduction, who am I? Went through that already. Who are we? Surveyors and data managers for geospatial and built environment sectors. So for anyone who doesn't know what we do, um, we provide surveys and digital data of land, sea, underground, built environments um, for architecture, engineering and asset management clients. Um, and we do, we assist, we assist in various aspects of that from data management, resourcing um, and so associated with these areas as well. Um, <coughs> the types of surveys, specialised survey services, we have probably put in 250,000 man hours completed, um, offices in both Ireland and the UK, and I think that kind of sets us apart sometimes as well. There's a lot of different companies work in one or the other. We work cross-border, um, and it does give us a different insight into project types, um, procurement issues, um, workflows across the aisles, um, and in relation to BIM as well from BIM mandates in the UK, not so much here, but how we would approach projects ideally the same way in both places. Um, and again, lots of service completed, um, 30 years in business, uh, and we've a lot of experience in highly trained staff. Um, from BIM models, we've a lot of them produced. And again, I suppose from a construction point of view, um, a lot of design projects have a finite period, but it's, it's defined, it's set out. With us, we tend to have to provide data for these projects quite quickly. So you build up quite a lot of skill, I think, in, in modeling, um, in BIM programs. Um, again, it's from a different aspect, but you do build up a lot of skill and have to be produced quite quickly. Um, and we do, we rely a lot then on laser scanning to, to base our, our BIM models on. Um, we do base them on other survey types as well, but I would say 80% of our BIM models are produced solely on laser scanning and the rest then will be in conjunction with laser scanning and traditional um, total station um, surveys as well. And the types of surveys we do, again, underground utility surveys, BIM, hydrographic, um, we provide GPR, UAV, and you might have seen this one just here. Um, and we do survey engineering, laser scanning, property, special inspections, a lot of different areas, a lot of different types of services, that under the BIM envelope, I think we're, we're starting to combine a lot more of these services, a lot of the workflows, a lot of the software types. Um, it's a challenge getting them all into um, a BIM project, but we work hard to, to try and integrate them. Um, and again, the brief on this project, uh, our client, it was for um, Parnell Square Cultural Quarter. And you can see from the little picture there, it's quite a large convoluted area. Um, the whole lot of it was to be used for um, context for a BIM process. Um, understanding the, the, the space and scale of it was, was a huge challenge. Um, it's one of the reasons BIM was chosen. I think solely relying on traditional methods, especially in the time scale that, that this project was being undertaken in, is a massive challenge. Um, I, I think you just, you don't, just like a never ending <laughs> list of of dates and times you would need to go back to pick up extra information. And I think providing it in a BIM, um, in a BIM process, it solved a lot of the headaches. It raised a lot of headaches. Um, so sometimes you're trying to answer kind of solutions. You're trying to solve problems, but sometimes you raise problems then as well just by providing um, such data uh, quickly on a project. Um, and again, understanding, I think BIM, BIM was, was the only way forward for, for this type of project. Um, it was seen as key to understanding the site and delivering a more efficient, complete design. Um, and in order to assist in this, we provided different services. We provided laser scanning, 
and we provided traditional CAD, we provided photography, BIM models of the complete site, and we had to link all this back to the same point, <laughs> to the same source. Um, now, the, on the innovation side of it, what we tried to do with this as well, we have a lot of different services, a lot of different, we've from, from photography, from model data, from laser scanning. How do we give this to a client um, in an easy to understand package? Um, what we eventually decided on was to combine photography. A project like this, each of the rooms, each of the buildings, the types of details you come across in it are, are vast. What we decided to do in the end then was, we did supply this stuff separately, we then integrated it um, afterwards into the model um, by using objects, by linking URLs to images. That then allowed users to click where the, the, the laser scanner locations are, and it brings them straight into the actual 360 imagery. So they could see within the model, they could then go straight to the photography of that same, that same setting. Um, any details that are missed, like patterns, very ornate little details that wouldn't be modeled, would be picked up straight away, and it allowed linking of the photography in an organized way to the model, so that you're not having to go through folders, lists of, of separated imagery. It's all located from geolocated points within the model. Um, I think that, that makes it a lot quicker, a lot easier to understand the project. Um, you can see a little snapshot there. Not sure if you can make it out, but there's two little floating little balls there by the radiators. That's what we use. We use model objects. Um, clicking on them brought up the properties then on the next slide here. And that's a picture from, again, we, this was uploaded to A360. And you can see on that blue sphere, um, a link on the left there in the properties. And it's just, it's a quick way of enabling someone to click on that and then see the exact same scenario, but in real time photography. Um, that brings you to this, essentially. And that allows you then to pan around. And again, the technology is out there. It's, it's not that hard, but it's just, it's part of a service that should be there, that should be there on all these types of projects. It's not that difficult to do. It, it essentially just was a learning curve in, in, in making it streamlined. Um, so we had to manage this data. Would it be stored on-site? Would it be stored off-site? How would a client get access to it? And how would they share the information then to each other? For, for this project, we did, we provided links um, it allowed clients to click on them, but what we did was we provide a password access then, and all the data is stored um, off-site on servers, but through password access. So it gets shared, but only with passwords then is it enabled. Um, no software is needed then in the end. What we did was, they're available within the models. What we did was, once we uploaded this into um, A360, from the client side, they would get a link, they'd be able to view all the models and then view all the photography, all within their web browsers. And our aim really was, we've had headaches in the past with dealing with massive file sizes for both scans, for models, for different types of information. And the whole purpose of this was just purely to be able to send this information to someone and they wouldn't need their own software. All they would need is a web browser and they'd be able to view it. And it would enable markup functions, it would enable commenting, it would enable viewing of photography, and it would enable very, very, very quick collaboration on, on what the project looked like and how it was going to unfold. And um, I think that was the primary purpose of this. Um, speaking about uploading then online, we have developed um, our own little portal as well. And it takes care of a lot of this. We are able to now view BIM, CAD, point clouds, imagery, animations. We're using KML viewers. Um, Utility information is being put in there, and um, that'll be seen in our demo a little later as well. Um, now we should be 410, but I think everything is running a little later, so um, probably slightly later than that. But it's 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 using the same idea that how do we give data to a client? Because we do so many different services, do you just <coughs> send it to a client on on hard drives? Do you send it to them through other means, through emails, or do you send them a link? Um, so I think just click on it and see all the information firsthand. Like we will always send clients the data anyway on hard drives and things like that. But I think this enables people to share it very, very quickly and to comment on it very, very quickly, even before they start interrogating models. 
and that was the primary purpose of this. Um, from a BIM aspect, I suppose, I mean, there's just a quick section through it, how you're able to use the stuff online. I'm sure everyone has used A36 now at this stage. Um, but enable you to cut, section, comment, all of the features that you, you would hope someone would be able to do on these things. Um, challenges, challenges for us on this project from both the scale, um, massive problem was access. The amount of properties on this, on this project, um, we couldn't get access to a lot of them, we had to go back. We had to then, we had to survey certain things in different steps, in different stages. We weren't able to just scan the whole area as quickly as we wanted to. Um, rooftop access was a massive problem for us. And then once we got rooftop access, going from roof to roof was another huge problem. Weather conditions, um, dodgy parapets were a problem, setting up tripods, all sorts of, of things. Um, it took quite a while and it was a challenge just purely to scale and being able to, to, to carry this out. Um, and I said, no, there, like, besides the maze of data, splitting locations even, it sounds so simple, but when we're modeling, we're not privy to a lot of the, the actual construction um, parts and construction information um, in, in a building. We can only see what's outside it on the faces, internal faces, outside faces. So we have to model things a little differently as complete solid objects in, in many cases. Um, and doing that is quite a challenge when you have all sorts of walls leaning, <coughs> bending, bowing, um, concrete beams sagging, deformations, chips, things like that. And then the, the, the size of the deformations affects how we decide then to, to model these objects. Um, and a simple thing like splitting locations actually threw up a, a few headaches. And we resolved it quite quickly, but thinking about it, and as we started, we, we had to change it a few times. Um, and it enabled us to, to have a master file and to link everything in together. But we were able to split it into chunks that were, I think, and I hope, were manageable enough for anyone else working on it. Um, and advantages of heritage bins. From any other person's perspective, um, we, we see the advantages of, of using BIM programs for heritage, um, but we're not all, always able to put in the information that we would like to see in these projects. It's, it's down to when we hand over these projects, it's down to the clients, the architects, how they would use these models um, for their purposes. But the ability, very, very simple ability of, of attaching attributes I mean, from a heritage point to me is just phenomenal. The fact that you can attach links, you can attach documents, you can attach O&Ms from an asset side, you can attach a whole variety of things into a very, very simple model. Um, and for us, the model doesn't have to be one thing. It can be many things to different people. Um, custom parameters and schedules can be created. Notes, documents, we, we filtered and tracked items within the models as well, but from uh, a client side, there's so much more you can do um, with these models from tracking, from um, both graphical data and attribute information. I think it's, it's, it's just phenomenal uh, advantages to it. Um, other elements involve quantifying objects quickly for repair, maintenance, tracking, sequencing, demolish, and development areas and objects. There's a lot of areas you can use heritage background models for. Um, Some different advantages, simple things like visualization and marketing. These are all, these are all things that we carried out on this model. Um, there wasn't much time involved in doing it, but they're all based on model data. It's a very, very simple tool, and it's something you can give to different clients, to different contractors, to different subcontractors. Very, very easy, depending on what you're, you're looking to, to do with a model. And the fact that it's based on, on data it's a very powerful tool. Um, and a, a quick snip down, I'm not sure how well it comes out. But that section cut there, that's just a black and white model with a color laser scan on the front of it. But it's very, very simple. We link in our, our laser scans. We can do them, and most people are used to the black and white ones. If we do full color, you can see pattern details on it. We use both our laser scans and our models in conjunction with each other to both compare, to detect any tolerances, issues, any variations, but also as a visualization tool. When we, when we have a model and we have scan data linked in, the, the speed that you can detect what objects are and what, what objects should be 
versus what you're modeling and versus what even a black and white point cloud would look like. The speed increases are huge. I mean, it enables us down the line to leave our links in and it enables us to, I suppose, attach newer and updated scans. Um, there's a phenomenal amount of things we can do with it. And that was pretty much just coming to the end. Um, and again, future scans will be linked in any time. I think that's it. I'll just leave it on a nice little match.